finishing with the schedule, now we are switching over to the next part of the dissection, that is the face. So before going to the dissection of the face, one should be very clear that what we will do the bones of this region. If you know the bones of this region, then only you can understand what is the anatomy of the face. So you have already done the norma verticalis and norma occipitalis. Now we are switching on to the next part, that is the norma frontalis. The frontal or front part of the skull. So while doing the frontal bone, that is the norma frontalis, the frontal bone is the foremost norma frontalis. So here we see the frontal bone and from the frontal bone is coming the central suture and which is going laterally where the coronal suture. So these are the two parietal bones with the frontal bone. In the lower part, in the midline, on either side, there is the bony sockets. These are called the orbit in which the eyeball is fit. So we will go into the detail of the orbits when we do the eye. At present it has got a superior border Mere border, inferior border, and lateral border. So that is the bony orbit, superior, medial, inferior, and the lateral border. So we form the socket for the lodgement of the eyeball. Just above the orbit, this bony part where the eyebrows are present is raised. So this raised part of the Above the superior border of the orbit is called the superciliary arches and it is more prominent in the male skull. So this is the feature of male skull. In the middle here also, this is a raised area a little bit. This is called the glabella. The superior border of the orbit has got a, in its medial one third has got a notch, we call this supra orbital notch. In few of the skull, a bone is formed below the notch and this notch is maybe converted into a foramen, maybe bilateral or unilateral. Where it is converted into foramen, we call this supra orbital foramen. And we know what passes through the supraorbital foramen? Supraorbital artery, supraorbital vein, and supraorbital nerve, which we have done recently, the nerve supply and blood supply of scalp, the front part. In living, just medial to the angle between this via the medial border of the orbit, there lies a fibrous pulley. Right above the fibrous tissue, this pulley is called the trochlea. And from inside to outside from the orbit, by touching this trochlea, comes out a artery, a vein, and a nerve. Now what you will name it? 
supra trochlear artery vein and where the trochlea word is derived from trochlea so trochlea is medial and supra orbital foramen is lateral so this is the mutual position of the supra trochlea and supra orbital is always lateral supra trochlea is medial then in between just below the glabella and below the orbit there lies the nasal cavity the bony part of the nasal cavity is seen in the norma frontalis and above here two nasal bones are present right and left forming the bridge of the nose so they are like the bridge two nasal bones right and left they forming the bridge just they slope like this. they are not flat they are like this. in Ch in chinese and japanese it is flat in europeans it is very much prominent so racial difference is there in the nasal bone pattern so in the indian they are average not flat not prominent so it is midway between them so two nasal bones they articulate with the frontal bone and it is visible by a sutural joint so this suture is joining the nasal bone <coughs> with the frontal bone is called the fronto nasal suture fronto nasal suture is a joint like we have done the coronal suture and sacral suture so all the bones of the skull they are flat bones and they are having the sutural joints the lower part of the nasal bones is attached to the nasal cavity and nasal cavity is seen as a separator in the right and left nasal cavity is called the nasal septum nasal septum which is forming the medial wall of the nasal cavity this is the lateral wall of the nasal cavity the nasal septum is seen in the midline of it in the nasal cavity then the lateral bone or bone of the cheek is called the zygomatic so prominence of the cheek is because of the underlying zygomatic bone and this zygomatic bone is also articulate with the frontal bone lateral to the orbit and the joint is visible that's called the fronto zygomatic plus suture or zygomatic or frontal suture so that is the meeting place of frontal bone with the zygomatic bone. similarly so this is the zygomatic bone. and literally if you trace this zygomatic bone literally so this is the zygomatic bone so superior attached to the frontal bone and if you trace it literally it forms an arc this is called the zygomatic arc so this is the lateral extension of this zygomatic bone and this zygomatic arc is protective in function so any lateral injury of the face the zygomatic arc is so strong that it won't allow the underlying skull to be fractured so it is curved and convexly laterally present in such a way so it is a shock absorber in lateral head injuries or facial injury also so this is zygomatic arc going laterally so this is zygomatic bone 
medial edge gigantic bone is attached or articulated within another main bone of the face this is the main bone of the face which is forming the facial structure and this bone is called maxilla and maxilla is attached with the eight teeth on one side so the lower border of this maxilla bone this whole bone is dotted one is maxilla so this whole maxilla bone is having in its lower part these are attached in the sockets or the pockets these pockets they are called the alveoli alveolus this single as we have seen in the alveolus in the lungs so they are also alveoli so because of these alveoli the lower border of the maxilla is called the alveolar border we have to carve it so this whole bone is the maxilla So this is the zygomatico maxillary suture. Then the maxilla bone is also articulated with the nasal, later part of nasal bone. So it is called the nasomaxillary suture. Then this maxilla bone is also attached with the frontal bone. It is called the frontal maxillary suture. So these are the joints. So maxilla forms joints with the frontal bone, zygomatic bone, nasal bone. So from all this, and just below this supraorbital notch of the foramen, in the maxilla we also found a larger foramen here, below the orbit. Just at the junction of the medial one third and lateral two third of the lower border of the orbit, somewhere there, but just in line with the supraorbital. So this is called the infraorbital foramen. infra orbital foramen and what passes through comes out through the infra orbital foramen a very thick nerve and its starting point or exit point from the supra infra orbital foramen is like the thick broom like structure a bunch of nerve fibers they are exiting from it and it is supplying the need by sensory the skin or the maxilla and the zygomatic bone so this nerve which is passing through this is called the infra orbital nerve whichever foramens are coming they are all emissary foramens they go through and through the skull bones and every foramen we should know what pass through it so that will be your viva in the practical So this is infraorbital foramen. This is nothing but this is the terminal branch of the maxillary nerve. And maxillary nerve is the branch of fifth nerve, cranium, that is the trigeminal. So here it terminates, and it is sensory. As far as sensory means, it supplies skin of the cheek. Infraorbital, a very large area of the skin is under this supply. and if you put the your tip of your little finger just medial below the medial border and you trace it 1 cm below and you deeply press it you will easily find the infraorbital foramen and if you press the infraorbital foramen for a few seconds you feel the numbness of the skin over this area this is the infraorbital foramen 
just in line with this supraorbital is the infraorbital part. <coughs> Then over this zygomatic bone, we are very minute, two foramens are also found. In the zygomatic bone also. One is above, and one is below. Very fine. Only tip of your swing needle can pass through this. So these are mystery foramens. The name, the upper one is called the zygomatical temporal foramen. And zero is called the zygomatico facial foramen. Zygomatico, upper one is called the zygomatico temporal, and below is called the zygomatico facial foramen. And same name of the nerve passes through them. So from the above, there passes the zygomatico temporal nerve, and below passes the zygomatico facial nerve. Both are the branches of maxillary division of the trigeminal, who is terminating as infraorbital nerve. So this is how you remember the foramina in the norma frontalis and the structure passing through them. So after doing the norma frontalis and the features, now we switch on to the next part of the norma, that's called the norma lateralis for the lateral view of this skull. So this is the lateral view of the skull in which all the bones are visible. A new bone is visible here. That is called the temporal bone. Suture bones are present joints on the normal uterus. New bone is visible here. This is the temporal bone. This is the frontal, this is the nasal, this is the maxillary, this is the zygomatic, this is the parietal, this is the occipital. The temporal bone is like. And one more bone is visible here. A very small part, mostly this bone lies intracranially, but a small part comes out is called the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. Greater wing of sphenoid bone. Now the temporal bone it has got six parts. Number one is the squamous part. As we know, squamous means it is thin, scale-like, transparent. If you see it against this light, you will see the light is coming through. So this is the squamous part. So it is thin and liable to be fractured. But because of the gaily aporotica attached to the zygomatic arc, temporalis thick muscle, 
covered by temporal fascia, very less plus protected by the zygomatic arc. This squamous part is very least disturbed or deflected. Because wherever the muscles are attached to the bone, so muscles they act as the shock absorber. So they bear the brunt of the external injury. That's why they are called shock absorber. Otherwise, it's very thin and transparent also. That is the squamous part. The next part, just above this, there is a suture between the temporal bone and the parietal. This is called the temporoparietal suture, meeting of the two bones. And over and above this suture is convex upward. There lies two faint lines. On the parietal bone, they are called the superior and the inferior temporal lines. Note it. They are called temporal lines, but they are present on parietal bone. Never make them on the temporal bone. So upper one is called the superior temporal line in and inferior temporal. So they are more prominent in the male skull, but they are very less in the... So this is the superior temporal line, this is the inferior temporal line. With the male skull, so it is visible. Two temporal lines are visible. Then question arises, what attached to them? Superior temporal line, as we know, gives the attachment of the epicranial aponeurosis. Galea aponeurotic. No down. Number one. Number two. Temporal fascia. Number two, temporal fascia. So they are also important like the superior to the highest nuchal lines. The attachment is very, very important. Then come the inferior temporal line. What is attached to the inferior temporal line? Is the temporalis muscle. Never confuse. 99% of students fail to answer the attachment of the superior and the inferior temporal line. They reverse it. They always say the temporal is muscle is attached to superior temporal. But no. Superior is only made for fish. Number one, galea. Other is temporal. So underline it, remember it. Then the second part of the temporal bone is called the tympanic part. As you know, tympanic means tympanic membrane. So just here, there lies a hole to which the tympanic membrane is attached along the circumference of this hole. And this hole is called external acoustic meatus. External acoustic meatus. Acoustic means related to the audio. In the meters means small hole. In the anatomy, we use the word meters. The foramen, a little bit larger than the foramen. Meters. Around this external acoustic meters are the concentric plates of the bones. Thin bones forming a circle. Concentric. Around this, this is called the tympanic part of the temporal. External acoustic meat is also the part of the tympanic part of the temporal. So to these temporal, these tympanic plates is attached the root of our external ear or the pinna, the root is attached to it. And between the squamous part of the temporal bone and the lower part of the tympanic concentric plate, there lies a fissure. It's called the squamotympanic fissure. Squamotympanic fissure. What is this fissure? So th through this fissure passes the, now note down, corda tympani. Corda tympani. Only you 
write down the name, the detail we will go later on. Called or dependent. Then third part of the temporal bone is the styloid part. Styloid part. Just below the tympanic part, there lies the small elevated bone towards the anterior side. We call this styloid process. Styloid process and this styloid process is very important. Many structures are attached to it. Number one, write down, stylohyde ligament. Stylohyde ligament. Number two, stylomandibular ligament. Stylomandibular ligament. Styloglossus muscle. Styloglossus muscle. And stylohyde muscle also. There is muscle also whose name is stylohyde muscle. So it constitutes a styloid apparatus actually. So, so many structures. So it is attached to the tongue also. It is attached to the hyoid bone also. It is attached to the mandible also. The surrounding structure are there. Sometimes the stylohyde ligament is ossified. And then the stylohyde, the side process may be very, very long. When it is very long, in few of these individuals, it is called the eagle's eye. Eagle's eye. Style, long stylohyoid ligament. Ligament is ossified in few of the individuals. Otherwise, it is only 1.5 centimeter long, normally. Then the fourth part is called the mastoid part. So, mastoid part is the posterior lower part of the temporal bone. So, it is pointed forward and downward directly and pointed also because of the pointed, it, it is called mastoid because it looks like the, resembles the nipple of the female breast. The female of female breast nipple is called the mastoid word is derived from. And mastoid process or mastoid part is the example of pneumatic bone. Pneumatic bone. Pneumo means air. air is trapped during the development of this bone. So so many bones are other are also there which are pneumatic. Out of them, one is this, that is called the mastoid process. Just above the external meters, the fifth part of the temporal bone goes anteriorly and articulates with the diagrammatic bone to form the diagrammatic arc. So diagrammatic arc is formed by both the diagrammatic bone as well as the temporal bone. So from the temporal bone, a projection goes anteriorly and convexly. So this is called the diagrammatic process of the temporal bone. Similarly, to meet this from the gigantic bone, a temporal process goes backward, and both meet to form a sutural joint. That called the gigantico temporal suture, and this completes the gigantic part. So, because of this, the fifth part is called the gigantic part of the temporal bone. Gigantic part. So the upper border and the lower border of this diagrammatic are in the lower border there is the tubercle which is called the articular tubercle. Articular tubercle. And if a tangent is drawn from this superior border of the diagrammatic arc, what is drawn? 
Anybody knows what is mathematics? Tangent. 